Hey everyone, Steve from Backcountry Gallery here, and today I have a short little Photoshop trick I think you'll like. This trick is for getting rid of small areas of chromatic aberration, color fringing, and that sort of thing from your images. Now, my main use for this is actually removing chromatic aberration. Now, don't get me wrong, nine times out of 10, I can use the built-in tools in Lightroom or Photoshop for this. However, every now and then I get a case of chromatic aberration that's a little harder to eliminate with just the sliders found in those programs. Or perhaps I forget to do it and only later notice a problem once I've already processed the image. And that is where this trick comes in. So, in the first image, I'll show you how to use it to get rid of some chromatic aberration, and in the second, I'll show you how to use it to deal with a little color fringing problem. Again, I want to stress that most of the time, the tools in Lightroom or whatever raw processor you're using will be up to the task for this. This technique is for those times that it isn't or that it doesn't quite get the job done. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so here's our first example. In this one, we're going to eliminate a little bit of chromatic aberration. Let me zoom in here and we'll take a look at what we have. Now at 100% or 200% you can just start seeing some color fringing going on here. Got a little bit of that cyan blue chromatic aberration going on along here. Now it's very minor in this particular case. This was shot with the Nikon D7200 and the new Nikon 300 PF VR lens, which is a very good lens and isn't real subject to chromatic aberration. This is the first time I've ever seen it with that lens actually. So I went ahead and made a layer that had a little bit more chromatic aberration to it. I did that with the lens correction filter right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And normally you'd use the lens correction filter to get rid of the problem. And in this case, it could have, or Lightroom could have, but I wanted to show you an example. So I actually enhanced the problem here. I made it worse. So let me show you how we can go about eliminating this next. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom down a little bit. And let's go ahead and create a composite layer. Basically what we're going to do is hit Command or Control if you're a Windows user, Alt, Shift, and E, and that'll give us a merged layer that has everything from the layers below it. If you only have a background layer, just hit Command J and it'll duplicate it for you. So that's the first step. Next we want to blur this a little bit, so we're going to zoom back in, and I want to be able to see the chromatic aberration problem. And I'm going to go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. And what I want to do is I want to use this little slider right here and I want to make that green that you see right here go away as much as possible. So I'm going to keep moving that over till it looks pretty good and it does right there. I'm going to hit OK. And let's go ahead and change the blending mode from normal down to color. And as you can see, the chromatic aberration is gone, but there is a major problem going on here. If you notice, the color does not look as vibrant as it once did. Now we could fix that with saturation, but a much easier way is just to apply the chromatic aberration correction to the areas we need it. And in order to do that, we just put a layer mask on. So I'm going to go down to the layer mask. I'm going to hit Alt as I do this. I'm going to click it, and that'll give me a black layer mask hiding what we just did. Next, I'm going to go to the brush tool, making sure it is on white for my foreground color and the opacity is set to 100%. And then I can just go ahead and brush over the chromatic aberration problems I see right here. And you can see they are gone. It looks pretty good. I'm going to go down here. We'll correct that uh, a little bit under the beak here. I like to use just a small brush, so I'm getting just what I need here. I'm not getting anything extra in there, so I'm not messing up the color too much. And there we go. Go down this way. Very, very easy to do. If you do happen to doll a color up, you can actually go back and add a saturation mask and usually you can bring some of that color back. And one thing to keep in mind is we are using this as kind of a last ditch effort. Let's say we've tried correcting the chromatic aberration in Lightroom and we got a little bit of it, but we weren't able to get all of it. So this is kind of our last ditch effort. We had some stubborn chromatic aberration that just wouldn't go away. That's what we're using this for right along the beak here. Gets rid of it real nice. And while it's not perfect, keep in mind that we are looking at this at what, 300%. Uh, so when I zoom back out, you can see even at, uh, let's go to 100%. You can see the areas that we brushed over are completely fixed. So, and obviously I have a little bit more work to do here, but we're not going to go through the entire bird correcting the whole thing. You can kind of get the idea right here. So very, very easy to do. Also, one quick note I wanted to mention now that you see how this actually works. Keep in mind that when you're on the step where you blur the image, you want to use just enough blur so you don't see the chromatic aberration anymore, but only blur to that point. The blurring and consequent switching to color mode basically smears and dulls the color in the image, and the more blur you use, the duller the colors are going to be. 
and although we're only affecting a small area, overblurring can still make the color look odd in those areas, which will kind of defeat the purpose of this. So just use what you need. Next, let me show you how to use this to correct a little color fringing on this image right here. Now this is also an unprocessed raw file, so nothing's really been done to it other than just kind of imported it from Lightroom. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. And what I wanna show you is right here, we're gonna zoom into like 300%. And what I want to show you is right here, we have a little bit of color weirdness going on. I don't know if this is color fringing or moray or what it is, but you can see right here we have some really odd color going on. And that's what we're going to fix. We're going to use the exact same method. In this case, I only have a background layer, so I'm just going to hit Command-J to duplicate it. And we're going to go back to Filter and Blur and Gaussian Blur, and we're going to do the same type of thing that we did before. I'm going to bring this down until I can see the color, and then I'm going to bring it back up until it looks like it's pretty much gone. I think that does it right there. And let's go ahead and switch this to the color blending mode, just like we did before. And as you can see, the color got a little bit duller again, but not a big deal because, again, we're going to hit our Alt key, and we're holding that down and clicking Add Layer Mask. And back to the brush. Make sure we have our white foreground and 100% opacity. And watch this. When I brush over those color areas, they are eliminated. No problem at all. Completely gone and completely fixed. Looks really good. If I zoom down to 100%, it looks much better. You can see that we don't have any weirdness going on here with the color like we had before. So very happy with that. So if you get any kind of color fringing, any kind of color weirdness, it works really, really well to eliminate those types of problems. I'll do a little before and after here for you. You can see the color weirdness right here and turn it back on and it's all fixed. So that's how that works. So there you have it. In addition to the examples we saw, this works really well for just about any area with an odd color issue. So definitely give it a try the next time you run across an awkward patch of small color problems in your image. So that's it for the tip. However, I do have something else for you. If you're a wildlife photographer, I'd love it if you check out my ebook, Secrets to Studying Wildlife Photography. Thousands have already grabbed their copy, and I meet people every time I'm on a photo trip who tell me how much it's helped them. Check it out at my site. The link is below and in the YouTube description for this video. As always, thanks for watching, and please sign up for my free email newsletter so you'll always know when I post a new article on the site or a new video on YouTube. You can find that sign up on my website. And of course, I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's it for now. Have a great day, and thanks so much for watching.